www.meetradio.com. And we are here. Welcome to the show. Hello. We're here again. Yay. Yay. What? What's the problem? <clears throat> You're like staring off. So the tell table. me about tell me about your week. What do you got? What do I have? Well, what did my, you? I had a great weekend. Did you? Yes, I did. I get to play with my mom. Sorry. You got okay. to do what? I got to play with my mom all day Sunday. Nice. Mm. That's when we went craft show shopping. Craft show shopping. Mm -hmm. Is that different than regular shopping? Well, yes, because at craft shows, you, pay, you buy stuff that hopefully is made by the person that you're buying it from. Not, ah, not like okay. you're going to Macy's and you know, you're buying something that was you know, shipped ah, in from right. China or something. I got you. So it's something that's handmade at these craft shows. Usually. It, you know, I mean, there's, there's people there with their you know, junk that came from wherever wherever but this a lot of this stuff is handmade and it's yes made by the person who's selling it to you and it yes there's a connection there well and not only that but it's stuff that you're not going to find just anywhere right you know like my mom's friend that came with us she got a, a pocketbook that it was made out of the jacket of an actual book hmm. so it was you know a book on the outside with the wooden handles on it was adorable i would never carry it it's not my style but but it was, it was really really cute yeah huh. Okay. You know, it's a lot of doll stuff, you know, which is not my thing. Um, but a lot of jewelry, which I like looking at, and, you know, like homemade that. soaps and candles and sure, things sure. like that. You know. And I did two of the things I do best. I cleaned up and I slept. There you go. That was pretty. Oh, then I got up and I ate. That was my third thing I do, as you can tell. <laughs> so I got my birthday present. Oh, look at that from mom, huh? Yes, that's my birthday you present. Show that off. Yeah. It's very hard to see, but it's it's Botswana agate. And Botswana. Silver. That's right. Botswana agate and silver. Got to be careful. There's big flies in Botswana. Big ones, size of your head. Uh, okay. Yeah, Botswana. You say so. I'll I take knew a guy from it. Botswana once. Really? Yeah. I don't even know where Botswana is. Me neither. I don't know that I could find it on a map. Probably couldn't. Mm -mm. I could find it in a in a. Um, an encyclopedia or something. I probably could find it on Google there if I go. could figure out how to spell it. Well, <laughs> <clears throat> we have a hell of a show going on here, and yes. it is the week before Thanksgiving and all through the studio. So we're going to have some food stuff on today, Absolutely. Right? Oh, yes. I got, I found a great recipe for what to do with your leftovers. For turkey? Yes, what to do with your leftovers. So, I mean, it's perfect. Of course, this is my favorite holiday, Fat Man's Holiday. This is Thanksgiving. This is where... I love this holiday because everything is closed. There's nothing to worry about. It's a nice day off for me. By the time I start winding down, it's like you know, nine, ten, eleven o'clock, and Actually, the day's you know, pretty much over for me. This, but I love it. Food. There's been all this stuff about stores being closed and, mm. and spend the day with your family and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Right? Okay. On Thanksgiving. Yes. Actually, after all of that. Okay, and REI is going to be closed on Black Friday even, not just Thanksgiving, but actual Black Friday as well. Mm -hmm. They're paying their employees to stay home. Right. Giving them a paid day off. Right. On top of all of that, after all of that happened, our local um, uh, outlet center right. was advertising today on the radio. They're opening at 6 o'clock Thanksgiving night. Really? Yes. Well, I can I'm tell you. I'm saying boycott. Boycott. Yes. Well, I can tell you this. The Village Music Shop of Massac, Long Island, New York, will be closed on Thanksgiving Day. That's right, because they know way in hell I'm coming. That's right. So there's nobody going to be here. So you don't have to worry about that. And, uh, you know, we're uh, telling our employees they can stay home on uh, Friday as well. Oh, they're not going to be paid, but they can stay <laughs> home. A little bit of a wrinkle there, but, you know, we've given them the extra day, you know. <laughs> the kind of guys we are right there. Mm-hmm. But, so what else we got on the show? Oh, we got all kinds of great stories, and we, of course, we're going to check in with this week and next week, and we're going to, uh, we got uh, our stupid news, of course, and the, uh, the Glory Days two-minute warning. I mean, we got great stuff. So, um, we got the great segments, thrilling games, 
all of that kind of stuff. Before we get to it, though, we're going to take a quick commercial break. So stay tuned. You're watching the weekly show only at Amravio.com. We'll be right back. This is Chris Lust Dick, and if inravio.com spots you at an event wearing this bracelet, they will give you $100. For 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. This is Joe Larson. You should check out the 505 on Racing Show live every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Or catch us on video on demand anytime, 24-7, only on the Inravio TV network. Village Music Shop of Master. 1-800-HEY-DUDE. Your full service store with personalized attention, school band instrument rentals and sales, music instruction on all instruments for all styles and age groups, for guitars, drums, amplifiers, PA systems and accessories. It's Village Music Shop, 1495 Montauk Highway in Mastic. Call 1-800-HEY-DUDE or go to villagemusicshop.com. The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, Inravio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is Inravio.com. What's up, guys? We're Scan Off Fair, and we're here with Enravio. If they catch you at a show with one of these bracelets, you will win a hundred bucks. That's a lot of money. So get a bracelet. Do whatever it takes to get that. Hit them up online. <laughs> Welcome back. Like we said earlier, we have a mountain of crazy stories to get to, but before we do, let's take a look at the coolest upcoming events happening in New York this week. It's this week and next week. Hello once again, everybody. Welcome to another event-packed edition of This Week and Next Week. I'm Rick Everly, and I'll be gu your guide on this journey as we travel all throughout New York to discover all the cool stuff going down this week. So let's do it. First up is an epic bro country show at the Emporium in Patchogue tonight as singer-songwriter Chase Rice stops by the building. This American country star has been making waves for years and is finally picking up some well-deserved steam. His latest video for his single, Gonna Wanna Tonight, has already broken 3 million views, views on YouTube and it shows no signs of slowing down. Tickets are just 40 bucks, which is an even better price than when you know he'll also have with him the Cadillac 3 and Jordan Davis. Doors open at 7 p.m. and the show starts at 8 p.m. The whole thing is being organized by My Country 96.1, so tune in there for more details. But hey, maybe you're staying, saying to yourself, I want to go out tonight, but I'm not a big country fan. Well, that's cool. Big Daddy Rick has your back. 
Also going down tonight is a huge show by superstar DJ producer Hudson Mohawk at Webster Hall in New York City. This guy's been on a meteoric rise as of late, working with some of the biggest names in hip-hop, pop, and dance music. He'll also have with him R&B up-and-comer The Dream, so you can expect them to take the stage together at some point. Doors open at 8 p.m. and tickets are just $23. Again, that's tonight in the Grand Ballroom at Webster Hall. All right, let's move away from music and see what else is happening this week. You comedy fans are going to love this. Friday at the Paramount Huntington, Mad TV alum and comedy star Frank Caliendo will be performing stand-up live. This comedic genius has become infamous for not only his observations and characters, but for his huge roster of legendary impressions of everybody from Morgan Freeman to Al Pacino, Dr. Phil, and John Madden, especially his John Madden. The show starts at 7.30 and tickets are just 30 bucks. Oops, looks like we're out of time. But be sure you're following all of our other awesome content at InRadio.com and hanging out with me over at RickEberly.com, at RickEberly on Instagram, and Twitter. This week and next week is brought to you, as always, by Village Music Shop in Massac, New York. Your one-stop shop for all musical instruments, equipment, and lessons. Thanks for tuning in, Internet, and I'll see you next time. Wow, a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, thanks, Rick. I so, like Frank Caliendo. Yeah. He's good. He's very funny. Get a kick out of him. Yes. Right? It's always a fun time with it's him. It's amazing to me that anybody can do that many voices. And just, I see the person. When he does someone a voice of someone, I see the It's like he starts to look like whoever he's doing the voice of. Mm -hmm. I don't get it, but I, it's the way it works for me. It's weird. Yeah. He does a good John Madden, that's for sure. Yes. So, yeah, get over there. Check that out at the Paramount Theater. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. Well, I think it's safe to say that the world is a crazy place with, filled with even crazier people. This segment features some of the craziest of the crazies. It's Stupid News. So, Oxford Dictionaries is named the 2015 Word of the Year, and the winner isn't actually a word. It's an emoji. Faced with tears of joy, Emoji was named the 2015 Word of the Year by the Dictionary Maker, and it's the first time the winner has not actually been a word. In fact, the Emoji, also considered a pictograph, goes by many names, but for the sake of the award, it was the word that best reflected the ethos, mood, and preoccupations of 2015. Emojis have been, been in use since the 1990s, but 2015 saw the biggest usage of the pictograph so far. Face with Tears of Joy was the most used emoji on the planet, used in 20% of texts in England and 17% of texts in the United States. And emojis are now commonly used by the greater population, not just teens, to express more nuanced communication in texts and to communicate across different languages. That is actually cool. So you can communicate with somebody that you can't actually communicate with, with pictures. I never even thought of that. When I found this story, I was like, oh, that's, that's kind of cool. Never thought of that. No. You know the, the emoji we're talking about, right? Sure. You know, it's got the big smile like it's laughing and crying at the same time. Sure. But yeah, pictures are worth a thousand words, so why not? You know, show and tell, right? Yeah. I don't use that many emojis, do you? Not at all. No, I use the, you know, I use the wink, the smile, and the, the, the one with the tongue sticking out. That's pretty much all I ever use. I use uh, basically none. Don't have time for that. You're just no fun at all. I am not. I'm not a social person. Mm -mm. Occasionally mean, I'll use the heart, but run. that's really it. That's it? That's all you use. Well, a French advertising agency c created a pair of slippers designed to prevent loose Lego pieces from damaging their owner's feet. Brand Station posted a video to Facebook showcasing a rectangular pair of Lego slippers that will be given away as part of a promotion on the toy, uh, toy company's website. Both slippers can be worn on either the left or right foot, and the heavily padded insoles will protect feet from all variety of Lego pieces. Only 1,500 pairs were made, and they are available exclusively through a promotion that has entrants fill out a wish list on Lego France's website. Interesting. Have you ever actually stepped on a Lego? I have not. It hurts but like hell. I'm sure that some of these Lego pieces I've seen are not just flat. There's, you know, well, I you think know, there's like really cream pieces the, and things well, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no, but I think basically they're talking, they're talking about the talking flat about, ones. Yeah, the bricks, the, the bricks. little bricks. Yeah, I'm sure they hurt. It hurt like hell. I've done it when you know when I was a kid, and 
you're running around playing or whatever and you step on it barefoot, hurts like nobody's business. Really? Yes. I can imagine. Yes, so I think that's a great idea. I can't believe they didn't come out with them sooner, quite frankly. It makes perfect sense. Sure does. Mm -hmm. All right, my favorite fast food place in the yes. world. Yes, it's right up your alley. Taco Bell announced the fast food eatery's original building has been saved from the wrecking ball and will be moved to the company's headquarters. The Downey, California building, nicknamed Taco Bell Numero Uno, was the site of Glen Bell's first Taco Bell restaurant in 1962 and later went on to host a succession of small eateries after Taco Bell moved out in 1986. The building caught the attention of preservation groups and Taco Bell corporate after the current owners announced they were considering demolition. Taco Bell publicized the plight using the hashtag Save Taco Bell on social media and it soon found enough funds to purchase the building and have it transported to the approximately 45 miles to Taco Bell's headquarters in Irvine. Chief Executive Brian Nichols said, this is arguably the most important restaurant in our company's history. When we heard about the chance of it being demolished, we had to step in. We owe that to our fans. We owe that to Glenn Bell. The company said it hasn't decided on a new, new use for the old building, but fans on social media will be involved in the decision process. If they owe so much to, to Glenn Bell to save the building, why did they have to raise funds from That's their what fans? I'm they could have just taken one penny from every taco they sold in one hour of the day and bought the building. They didn't have to do any of that. It's Taco Bell for crying out loud. It's, it's got to be a multi-million dollar company, a multi-billion yeah, dollar company. that's what I'm company. saying. With the amount of money that they make, they could have... They had to do a, 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 a fundraiser. crowdfunding site. Right. What, what's the story with that? Yeah. And to top it all off... I want to see the thing on, on GoFundMe that says I need to raise money to move a Taco Bell building. Right. And what they should do is bring the Taco Bell to corporate headquarters that they really need to figure out what to do with it. You set it up the way it looked back in 1962, mm -hmm. and that's how what you do. And you set it up just like that, and you put all your paraphernalia and your stuff when people come to corporate headquarters for your little tour that you have, because I'm sure they have one. You know, you sell your Taco Bell t-shirts and your slippers and all your rest of your paraphernalia, your swag and stuff that you sell. That will be your Taco special Taco Bell place. Museum? Yeah, your Taco Bell Museum, exactly. And you sell your swag out of there, give away you know, your information, maybe little tiny taco samples like this. <laughs> Try this new taco. We just came out with it. Oh, very good. That's nice. Oh, yes. You know. Okay. Do you really need to go to social media for this? Hello, McFry. <laughs> burp, 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 burp. Guess not. All right. Well, an Australian man has helped to popular popularize a new form of exercise that mixes crawling and running by endorsing the workout on Facebook. 34-year-old Sean Mac McCarthy. Uh, McCarthy calls it crunning <laughs> uh, and is the founder of the Crunning Australia Facebook page, which hails the exercise as a game changer to personal fitness. According to McCarthy, the exercise, which involves moving, moving quickly on all fours with knees above the ground, provides significant benefits in comparison to traditional running. McCarthy believes that the phenomenon can extend outside of Australia to countries such as the United States, where personal trainer Kareem Bayer conformed, confirmed the uh, benefits of crunning. However, both McCarthy and Bayer stress caution and careful preparation before trying something like crunning. McCarthy highly advises that anyone interested in crunning use a pair of gloves in order to prevent injury to the hands and fingers by saying, you really need those gloves. Thank God I got them, he said. You certainly wouldn't want to do it barehanded, and you need to cover those fingers. Any sneakers are fine, it's just the gloves that are crucial. And the hockey helmet that says, I'm an idiot. And it says that, hey, stand back, I am crunning. <laughs> You got to bring back the, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, but you got to bring back the other picture where you see the people from behind. Look at this. How ridiculous does that look? You come, up, come upon a bunch of people on the, on the path in the park. I'm, I'm going to tell you that Butts that's, up. I'm going to tell you that that's going to hurt your back right there. That's what I'm going to say. And personally, I like, you know, this is very similar to the plan that I had. I, you remember the exercise plan that I came up with? No. You don't remember? No. It was called Clang. Clang. <laughs> yeah, it's Clang. You, you remember Clang? No. That's where you lay down and sleep and you dream that you're running. And that's called Clang? Called Clang. Shouldn't that be slaying? Why would it be called slaying? Sleeping and laying. 
Well, you're or delaying, no, dreaming, and laying. You know, you're laying and dreaming. You're running. It's claying. You know, and there's no saying that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's ridiculous. It just looks stupid. We go it along on all fours, butts up like that. It's just stupid. There's no way you'd catch me they doing it. They should call it crabbing. Mm. You'd no way you like catch me doing it, no matter what, ever. No, not happening. You don't want to crun? No, I do not want to crun. I have no desire well, to crun. Kyle will come out and he'll crun for us on camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. You know, Kyle has told me about some of the things that he's gotten or had to do or they've made him do whatever in his acting career. And they've made him do some silly things, but even that I don't think he would do. Nope, see, he says no. Even he that. He wouldn't even do it. do it. Nope. And this is a guy who actually, uh, you know, did some scenes with Charlie Sheen, so be careful. <laughs> I mean, you know, if he doesn't want to crun, I'm getting a fart face from Kyle now. He's, he's confused. No. No, 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 not saying that. Oh, God. Big snay on the hiv. <laughs> All right, I think we've, we've gone as far as we can go with crunning. All right, Plan Check in Los Angeles is known for their insane dishes. One of the cooler innovations from the Plan Check kitchen is their ketchup leather. Though it looks more like a fruit roll-up than actual leather, the tangible condiment is actually solidified ketchup. The purpose of the ketchup leather, according to Food Steez, is to keep the sweet red sauce from soaking into the burger bun. Upon contact with the meat patty, the, ketchup, the perfect square of ketchup rehydrates itself. Is there really a need for dehydrated ketchup in the restaurant industry? Or are we taking these burgers into space? This is probably good. To, oh, so really, when you think about it. So in other <laughs> words, when you walk up to the counter and you pick it up your burger and your fries and you say to the guy, listen, Bonnie needs some more ketchup. He goes over to this roll that's hanging off the wall like a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> and he starts ripping off. <laughs> <laughs> And rolls it up around his hand and gives it to you. Here's your ketchup. Yeah, no. See, I don't understand because they say they said that the, that that way the, the bun doesn't get soggy, but if it automatically rehydrates as soon as it comes in contact with the patty, is that the same thing? All right, wait. Let me just fix this up, okay? Let me let me put this out there because we're going to share this on social media so everybody understands, okay? We don't need to change things that, like ketchup, that all you do is squeeze it out of a bottle on your bun and it's fine, okay? Because uh -huh. you're going to eat it, it's all going to get mixed up in your stomach anyway, okay? We don't need to crun. <laughs> if you want to lose weight, you, there's a perfect exercise my attorney showed me. Of course, I haven't done those in quite some time. When Put you're eating... Put your cookie down. <laughs> yes, when you're eating, you take the plate and you go like this. You push it away and you're done. And the other thing is you can just walk or go to the gym and do some exercise. You don't need to come up with something new. If you guys want something to do with your great brains because you're so smart, why don't you work on things that we need to work on, like curing cancer, world peace, hunger, you know. Oh, what, are you kicking, Miss America now? Kicking world ISIS, peace. Whatever. Kick ISIS's butt, whatever you want to do. But put your uh, brains to good use. Ketchup and a... <laughs> come on. <laughs> you go to the supermarket, yeah, give me some toilet paper and a roll of ketchup. <laughs> I mean, come on, what are we talking about here? So pulling it out of a box like a tissue. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? How many you need? Yeah, no. There you go. That's ridiculous. You wipe your hands with the ketchup and put the paper towels on your bun by accident. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, what are we talking about? Yeah. No. Well, it is called stupid news for a reason, but let's get going. All right. Well, this is probably a good time to take a quick break, but don't move a muscle because when we come back, we have our sports update with the guys over at Glory Days, a very special in-studio interview and performance by acclaimed children's singer-songwriter Carrie Worth, and a whole bunch of other stories you won't want to miss when we come back.
world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in Ravio.com. Hey, I'm, I'm Raul Panther. And I'm Commander B. Hawkins. And I'm Mark Well. We're uh, some of the proto men. If we see you without this bracelet, we get punch in the d- But if you have this bracelet from inravio.com, you can win 100 bucks. Put one of these on, or else. For 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. Welcome back. <laughs> you having fun? <laughs> well, I hope you're having fun. And uh, yeah, it's coming up on Turkey Day. Well, this week in sports was a cra- as crazy as ever. So let's get caught up with all the action in this week's Glory Days two minute warning. Hello again, everybody. We're Bruce and Disco from the Glory Days show, and this is your in radio sports two-minute warning. Fair or not, the Patriots are forever synonymous with cheating. It doesn't matter if it's football games, Monopoly, or Solitaire. Every time they win at anything, they're under scrutiny. They may actually have more gates than Super Bowls, but now someone noticed another, well, let's just call it an anomaly. It's sad to think that someone has been keeping track of this, but it seems that the Patriots have won 19 of their last 25 coin flips to start a game. Let that sink in for a second. They have successfully predicted the random flip of a two-sided coin 19 out of the last 25 times. And I'll bet you thought that was a 50-50 shot, right? I, it is. The odds of winning 19 of 25 consecutive coin flips? A probability of just one in 189.5. That's about a 0.5% chance. But that means that they are right over 75% of the time on coin flips. How is that possible? Are they just lucky? It's a little pa- more than luck there. The Patriots like to defer when they win the coin toss and kick off to start the game so that they'll get the ball in the second half. That gives them an advantage, like gaining second half momentum or adjusting to weather condition. It also gives the, pants to, uh, the Pats a chance to see what the other team's offense is going to do. But is Coach Bill Belichick the incarnation of Lex Luthor, the greatest criminal mind of our time? That's a good question. He may not be an evil genius, but it's not something the Patriots take lightly. Their attention to detail is what has made them so successful for so long. It's one of those things that we discussed prior to the game, Coach Bill Belichick said. We try to do what's best for that particular game, for that particular situation. Sometimes we actually withhold that decision until we see what the actual field conditions are for that particular game. So... They plan for what they're going to do when, when they win the coin flip. Not if they win, but when they win it. Just how do they know they're going to win the coin toss? I don't know. 75% of the time is a pretty incredible right, rate for something that should be 50-50. And if any other team had run into that string of luck, besides the Patriots, no one would care. But it's the Patriots. 
They know stone unturned patriots. There has to be a secret to it, I would think, you know? Yeah. His evil genius couldn't possibly be so vast as to know the statistics and probabilities behind different refs and their flips. Could it? Maybe he really has joined the dark side. I am your father. <laughs> you can get the lowdown on what's happening in sports and more on The Glory Day Show with Bruce and Disco every Saturday morning here at 10 a.m. in the East, only on the Enradio TV network. This has been your Enradio Sports Two Minute Warning. I'm Paul Descafani, that's Bruce Oler, and you have been warned. Thanks, guys. I love the side. Paul, Paul's got the good side arm he going does. on, He does. He's right? got the good, cool side arm. <laughs> all right, well, all I got to say is heads I win, tails you lose. Okay? <laughs> That's Lex Luthor for you. And, uh, uh huh. Okay. All right, well, we got to keep Did you know the coin moving. toss was such a big topic of conversation? Yeah, well, when you win. 19 out of 25 times, it's, you know, becomes a big topic of conversation. I guess that's true. Yeah. All yeah. right, well, we got to keep moving because we've got a lot to cover. A lot to cover. We have an absolute treat coming up. Accomplished children's performer and singer-songwriter Carrie Worth is live in studio talking all about her career, the anticipation towards her new upcoming album, and what it's like to perform for the most demanding audience you'll ever meet. She'll also be performing one of her newest songs live. Let's check it out right now. Hey everybody, this is Kyle from Inravio.com, and we are lucky enough to be sitting with children's performer Carrie Worth is in the studio. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Now you are a children's performer, and you've been doing this since you were, you've been performing since you were 10, correct? Yes, what, that's what, true. Uh, what led you into this direction, to children's performing specifically, singing and songwriting? Well, at 10 was actually my biggest performance to date. Um, <laughs> I performed at the Waldorf Astoria for 4,000 people wow. in Yiddish, for 4,000 Holocaust survivors. So it was a, it was scary. Interesting venue, yeah. Very scary, and I sang with adults, and I sang with other children, but I had a solo, and that was my first performance, and that's when I realized I definitely had some stage fright. Mm. But from that point on, I always loved to sing, and I always loved to songwrite, you know, to other songs, to other music. And um, I loved lyrics and writing, you know, poetry all the time. But as I got older, I basically, you know, I, you know, performed in my show. I performed in shows in high school, and I sang the national anthem in college. I ended up going to Cornell to become a doctor, and I did not. I'm a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a similar kind of field. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> and then um, I ended up graduating, and at the end I said, you know, I, I either could go do show tunes on Broadway or I can now go to medical school. And I didn't really want to do either of those things, so what ended up happening is I applied to physical therapy school, got in, became a physical therapist. Um, my dad's a physical therapist, so I wanted to run his company with him, and um, I started, I went to NYU, and I started performing at night in clubs, and I created an album of dance music called Becoming. Ooh. Yes, so that was in my 20s, and at that point I was getting signed to Sony and Interscope, and I was doing really well, but I still had major stage fright. <laughs> oh my God, I just didn't want, I had to build an audience, and I didn't want to. <laughs> it's kind of tricky. Yes, it was tricky. So what ended up happening was, um, at that point, I had to decide, you know, I still wanted to be creative, and I still wanted to do something with my voice and still write and record, and I really wanted to do this, but I had to find a way to make it better for myself. So I just picked myself up and joined a course called Music Together. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work with kids, because they seem to be a rowdy audience, mm -hmm. and they tell the truth, and maybe they'll be hard enough on me that I'll be good at this. Absolutely. You know? They are the most brutally honest people in the world, our 9 and 12-year-olds. That's right. And whatever's wrong with you that day, they will tell you. <laughs> they will. And whatever's right with you, they will let you know that too. And you feel very special. Mm. I get so, a compliment from a child. 
highlight of my day. That's what I'm saying, right? And that's what I, that's all I wanted. Let me work for that. Let mm. me just go. Now, mind you, I never babysat. <laughs> I didn't know if I wanted children. I do have children. I have a seven-year-old and a two-year-old. But I was, I had to be inspired by that, you know, to have yeah. to be a parent. And um, after this course of music together, which was a course they made in the 70s for kids from zero to four and parents. And it was made, it was created by psychologists and musicians. And together they created a curriculum of music. Um, and this was just the most stimulating thing I've ever seen. Mm. So I started volunteering in, in Cobble Hill in Brooklyn and in Manhattan. And I became a teacher in music together. At the end of a year, I was gonna. I was offered my own franchise in Greenwich Village for Music Together, and they're all over, you know. And I thought, well, you know, I, I kind of want to make this more contemporary and um, about now, yeah. Instead of you know, it was a little dated to me. It's a great course, mm -hmm. so I said, let me write my own. I'm a songwriter. Let me let me create me. So I created uh, Me and You by Carrie Worth. Yeah, you founded your own actual music program called the yes. Me and You Music Program. Tell us about that. What is what do you do? So um, at that point, after this, I, I started writing songs. And from my background in music together, I realized how it was to work with children mm. and um, felt very, very comfortable working with them. So I kind of worked off them. You know, I, they were, I wouldn't call them my lab rats, but they, <laughs> were, they, had, they were very refreshing lab rats. They really had a lot of things to, to give to me. Mm. And mm. they stimulated my you know, intellect and like how to write songs for them and for myself, you yeah. know, to calm myself down and to also get them involved and excited. Yeah. So it's, it was like a double whammy. It's interesting you said that because um, what I find interesting about your music specifically is that it has a little bit of substance to it for children's music where your goal is to calm children and try to inspire them to write their own music and communicate with parents. Was that your overall intended goal? To you know, when I first started, I just wanted to make the children happy. Yeah. And then I realized I was making myself happy, too. Mm -hmm. And then I was making the parents really happy. I was calming them down. So I started, at that point, I was really inspired to have a child. So when I had my daughter, Penelope, who's now seven, turning eight, she um, was my muse. And it, really, because everything, when she was born, you're thrown into parenting. And yeah. it's like, ah, you're like falling <laughs> off a cliff. And we're both crying. What do we do? <laughs> and I started singing for her and creating all of this. You know, she looked at an ant and, you know, I'd write about an ant and all the bugs. That's an ant, you know. Wow, Three tears for the bugs. And then, you know, it would, she'd giggle and learn. And, and then um, if, you know, and I was really silly about it. We were outside planting coriander, you know, look eating beets, and I said, oh, what is this? Coriander and beets? And you know, would I still love you if you smelled like that? And she was <laughs> like, you know, she's two. And then, yeah. you know, a whole song comes out. But um, I really, you know, I think from that point on, I created this whole album. And with that, I started my classes. I had, I, and I was in preschool, and I was working in a bunch of different places, and I started meeting a bunch of different um, parents, you know, parents that um, did not speak English, parents that did mm -hmm. speak English, you know. Um, I work for a Japanese population of moms that, oh, that wow. all get together every other Monday to come with their children and I sing for them. Um, music is universal. Absolutely. And um, I think it calms down everybody at any age. So I started realizing that, you know, a child is underestimated in their intellect. So mm -hmm. I could actually write to that too. I don't have to write kidsy music. You know? Gotcha. It's a nice middle ground sort of. That's right. So I did. That's great. And you actually have a new CD coming out, or it came out, uh, correct, on iTunes and Spotify today or the yes, next three Yes, today. Um, it came out and um, it's on iTunes and Spotify. It's called Me and You. And I'm very proud of it. Um, I, I think that the Last song on the CD was the first song I ever wrote, and it took me about seven years to get that, like all recorded. Yeah, and, you know, so Ooh, you end up. Process. It's a process. It is a process, you know, to get to record. I did it all on my own, so mm -hmm. it's, you know, at this point, 
you kind of have to fund yourself and recording and getting it all distributed and you know if you're and all of that comes from you I mean even though I have about 50 more songs in my vault mm -hmm. to record <laughs> which is good maybe there'll be wow. three more you know yeah well, albums nice. coming up you know. can only hope so I mean so you have your album coming out and then um, you're gonna perform a song for us today can you do that sure, would that be I, great I sure oh, can. awesome we're gonna get a treat right now uh, what song will you be performing for us this song is called Kosciuszko Bridge Kosciuszko <laughs> one more time Kosciuszko Bridge it's really Kosciuszko but I say it Kosciuszko so the joke is trying to get the kids to say the name <laughs> and then just laughing at, I got it no I got you well we were actually my daughter and I were driving to Brooklyn and we were stuck in traffic mm -hmm. and are we there yet and I, and I started writing this song, and I looked up, and I could have been any bridge. It could have been Verrazano, White Sun, but no, it was the Kosky Asco. Of course it was. Yes, it Most was. complicated one. Let me fit well, that into my song. <laughs> <laughs> you did it well. Treat right now, Kerry Worth performing her original song, Kosciato Bridge. Take it away. Let's go. We drive all the way to play, all the way to play, all the way to play in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. beep, beep, beep. We're gonna play. Yeah. All day. Hey. Beep, beep. One time we get there. Jump over the bridge, over the bridge, over the Kosciuszko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. beep. We go around the BQE. It's very trafficy. Say hi to that beautiful city. <laughs> Gonna slide down the slide, climb up on the side, slide down the slide, climb up on the side, we're gonna slide down the slide, climb up on the side, we're gonna jump, 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 yeah, jump, 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 I'm gonna have a cookie. Have a piece of cake, maybe even a hot fudge sundae.
It's, it, it's concerning how much I like the children's song. You said this is for adults too, right? I hope so. That I makes like me feel a make... lot better, because that's like gonna be on my iTunes that's playlist. The plan. <laughs> that's the plan. That was so good. <laughs> what was that song called again? That was Kaski album. And that is off your latest album? Yeah, me that's and the you. first song on my, on my album. That's available on your album, Me and You, which is available on iTunes and Spotify right now. Um, thank you. Is there any place that we can find you on social media where people can follow what you're doing? Or how can people reach you, find this, buy this? Um, Carrie Worth Music Facebook is an easy place to, to find me. And um, also at kerryworth.com, I have a, a website. And um, you can go to CD Baby if you want to buy it, like right off of CD Baby, and then iTunes, Spotify, and there's a bunch of other ones to go on. But look up Carrie Worth. Fantastic. We're going to spread that everywhere. That's amazing. Um, one last question before we go. This is more for me than anything. What's a children's after party like? You're having one, do you guys like spike the apple juice or like what? Uh, maybe I do. Yes. Is there a bounce house and the adults just get a little loopy and they run in? Because that sounds great. Because that just sounds like a party I'd go to. That's a fun party. That would be a fun party. That'd be party. fun, right? <laughs> yes. Usually, you know, I used to perform at night. Now mm. I perform at 11 a.m. So. It's toned down. The rock star lifestyle is a little it's, bit turned down. The rock star lifestyle. You don't destroy hotels like you used to. No. No. That does not happen at all. Anymore. But I'd like it to. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> Gary, thank you so much for stopping by. That was absolutely thank wonderful. You this is Kerry Worth. You can find her on social media. We're going to put all that stuff on the lower thirds for you. Thank you so much for stopping by. Her album, Me and You, is available right now on iTunes and Spotify. I highly recommend you check it out whatever age you are, regardless. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is Kyle from Radio.com. Stay with us. Wow. That was really cute. You're nice, right? I, yes, I like the song. I could listen to it. You could listen to it, right? Yeah. And she seems really sweet. Are you dancing around? Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's cute. Yeah, it was nice. Well, thank you, uh, Carrie Worth, for stopping by and treating us with that incredible performance. Uh, we need to take another quick break, but stay with us because we still have our video game and tech update from the guys at Save and Continue, another game of fact or fiction, and a few more stories you'll have to hear to believe. All that and more when we come back. The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in Radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in Radio.com. Music Shop of Master, 1-800-HEY-DUDE, your full service store with personalized attention, school band instrument rentals and sales, music instruction on all instruments for all styles and age groups, for guitars, drums, amplifiers, PA systems and accessories, it's Village Music Shop, 1495 Montauk Highway in Master. call 1-800-HEY-DUDE or go to villagemusicshop.com.
I like that music. Yeah, it's All good. right, welcome back. It's been a great week to be a gamer as a whole bunch of highly anticipated games were released upon the world. Let's catch up on all the madness in this week's Save and Continue update. Hey everyone, this is Kyle from Save and Continue back once again to fill your pretty brains with the latest and greatest gaming and tech info out this week. The past couple days have been crazy for video game fans, so let's catch up on all the action. Fallout 4 is finally available! Well, I, I guess I shouldn't say finally, should I? I mean, the game was only just announced at this year's E3 conference, but already fans have sunk countless hours into it, and for good reason. Fallout 4 is fan-freaking-tastic. I mean, I had my doubts prior to its release, but this post-apocalyptic open-world behemoth of a game has been blowing minds since its release November 10th, allowing players to traverse the nuke ridden city of Boston. Really cool environment. The items and amount of customization are seemingly endless, the combat is satisfying, and the animations are, well, rigid as all hell. I mean, this is a Bethesda game, after all. That being said, the game isn't without its fair share of faults. Enemy AI can be sporadic and lackluster at times, and it'll be hard to find a player who hasn't dealt with his or her fair share of in-game glitches and clipping. Again, this is a Bethesda game. Negatives aside, though, the game is fantastic, looks fantastic, and plays fantastic, despite running on a 10-year-old engine. If you're looking to have the time of your life while simultaneously crippling your social life, then this is definitely a title you need to pick up. But not all games are created equally, however. Yesterday saw the release of another highly anticipated title, Star Wars Battlefront. Big fan. The latest installment in the highest grossing Star Wars related gaming franchise is back and not exactly better than ever. While the game is graphically one of the best looking titles we've seen, it doesn't unfortunately make up for the extreme lack of content and repetitive gameplay. After playing for about an hour and hitting every map, the game begins to become monotonous despite its varying game modes. This becomes even more frustrating when you learn about the massive amount of DLC and add-ons that are only available by purchasing the $60 season pass that will be rolled out over two years. So essentially, you're paying $50 upfront for half a game. But hey, at least there's no microtransactions. Yet. You can catch up on all the latest gaming and tech news during Saving Continue Live every Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, only at enradio.com slash live. We'll be talking about Fallout and Battlefront tomorrow, so make sure you join us. Also, be sure you're following at Enravio on Twitter and at Chainsaw Academy on Twitter, liking our posts over at facebook.com slash save and continue show, and of course, checking out our other cool shows at enravio.com. We will see you all tomorrow. Happy gaming. I know you, oh, don't thanks, play games. Kyle. you don't play games, but I hate microtransactions. Hate them. Really? Yes. If I'm not mistaken, aren't they the little things that pop up like, oh, you want to go to this room? You need to buy the key to get in here. Yeah, I hate those. That's ridiculous. I hate them. You, you buy the game, do what you got to do. Exactly. You don't want to have, you get in all, you're into it and you're doing great. And then also, oh, I have to buy an extra weapon because there's no way in hell I'm going to defeat this zombie or whatever the ha it happens to be. Yeah, that's You know, right. you have to get this extra weapon or something. I hate that's that. That's wrong. Yes. Drives me crazy. That should be outlawed. Should. Yes. Absolutely. I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. That's, that's bad. Yes. Bad. Well, let's go to uh, Joe Larson with the 5 or 5 on update. Hi, this is Joe Larson from the 5 or 5 on racing show at Enravio.com. For those of you who missed last week's show, you missed our discussion about how high are the paying divisions at local tracks and why the teams whose divisions have been eliminated won't move into it, such as the figure eights here at Riverhead Raceway. We also talked about our car counts in the figure eights back in the day and how two or three divisions raced at Isla Speedway and there was almost 80 cars there. We talked about Joe Gibbs Racing's driver Matt Kenseth and his meeting with NASCAR CEO Brian Franz and how that turned out as we move into Homestead. We also mentioned how Homestead could be 
or would be Jeff Gordon's last race. We went over the chase format with the final four, Kevin Harvick, Jeff Gordon, Kyle Busch, and Martin Truex Jr., and how it's whoever finishes best will become the Sprint Cup Series champion. We reviewed the finish from the NASCAR events at Phoenix and the current points plus the Formula One finish from Brazil in the Brazilian Grand Prix. Tune in next week at 7 p.m. as we discuss the final race in 2015 for NASCAR's top three series and who will be crowned champion in each of those series. We will also talk about the off-season activities, trade shows, indoor races, and banquet results and any swap meets that we know of at airtime. And please do not forget to check out all the shows at enradio.com. We'll see you next week. Sad oh, thanks, Joe. There's a lot of stuff going on right there. Mm -hmm. um, we have in the off season lots of content that we have to put out. We had, uh, you know, Kevin Basic uh, from Long Island Need for Speed helping us out, uh, going to the tracks with Joe, and uh, c came back with all kinds of content from all over the Northeast. So we have interviews with drivers and track owners and officials, and some really interesting stuff that we're going to be, uh, you know, putting out there during the off season. So. So Plenty you won't have time to be sad and depressed that the season is almost over? Absolutely not. It's going to actually make me even happier because I get to see all this awesome content. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we are just about out of time, so we have to go on to this next segment because I love this one. Because it's food. That's right. That's what we're all about here. That's right. We're fat people. We like that. <laughs> so Thanksgiving is next week, and while the holiday is about family and togetherness and all that kind of stuff, it's also about the food. So this seemed like the perfect time to check in with our friends at obiteit.com for something special and maybe even a little sinful. Of course, they did not disappoint. What I picked out to talk about this time is a great way to use up some of the leftovers in a new and creative way. This recipe is called Deep Fried Thanksgiving Dinner, and I can't wait until next Friday so I can give it a try. What you'll need is Thanksgiving leftovers, ready-made biscuit dough, and oil for frying. So here's what you do. You roll out the dough and you cut out approximately four inch circles, okay? You fill one side with a small stack of your favorite leftovers in combos that you like. You gently pull the dough over and you seal the edges with a fork. You fry them up one at a time in about three inches of hot, approximately 350 degree oil. You let them cool. You reheat the gravy and turn it into dip. Such a fun way to enjoy Thanksgiving all over again. Dig in and enjoy. Nice. I love it. Thanksgiving so it's like finger food. It's a Thanksgiving pierogi. <laughs> yes, exactly. Or a chalupa. Or an empanada. Is that what it is? I think so, with yes. The dough with the dough? Yes, isn't that an <clears throat> empanada? I think so. Well, it looks like we're out of time and I gotta go eat. <laughs> Because now you're hungry. Because now I'm hungry. <laughs> all right. So we're, of course, out of time. But thank you so much, as always, to all our amazing viewers. We'll be back in an all-new live weekly show next Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, only at enravio.com front slash live. Until then, be sure you're visiting enravio.com and checking out all our other live shows, following at enravio on Twitter, and liking our posts at facebook.com front slash enravio weekly. We'll see you all next time. See you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>